happy Mother's Day to all of the mothers out there. Thank you so much for joining me for some yoga this morning on this beautiful, sunny Mothering Sunday. Um, I thought we would do a lovely heart mondo class. That means we move from the back to the front of the mat, creating a nice circular flow um, with our vinyasas and with our warrior poses today. We'll be doing a couple of different warrior poses, lots of heart openers, lots of feelings of love because what comes to mind for me when I think about my mother is unconditional love and the unconditional love she shows not just to her own children, which she does so well, but to many children. For those of you that don't know, my mother is a teacher, so throughout her career she has given so much to so many different people. And I know growing up she was the other mother to many of my friends as well. So even if you are not perhaps a mother in the truest sense, there might be some mothering instinct inside of you. So we're going to celebrate that giving of that unconditional love today, both by our own mothers and then perhaps others in our lives who have shared that with us. So we're going to be doing lots of juicy back bends. We're going to start and end lying down a little bit more relaxed. So if you happen to have a blanket um, of yoga variety, great. If you don't happen to have one, don't worry. You can use a thick towel, fold it up, a you know, kind of throw blanket if you have one. This is just for a little bit of support in our poses. And if you don't have anything and you're not in a place where you can easily grab a prop, don't worry, all of the poses work without a prop as well. The blanket is just gonna add a little bit of extra here if you want and if you happen to have one. So if you have a blanket, go ahead and grab it. As I mentioned, we're gonna start off really nice little restorative inspired pose to begin and end our practice this morning of heart openers. If you happen to have a blanket or towel, go ahead and open it up so it's about as wide as the distance of your mat or a little bit wider short wise and then you're going to create a little roll with that blanket. So it's just a little cylinder and then place that kind of two thirds of the way down your mat and you're going to come and lie with your knees over that support. And it's your choice as you lie with your knees over that support, whether you just like your knees to be kind of right on top, toes pointing up, you can let your feet flop. I call this frogging, kind of out to the side. Or you can bring the soles of your feet together and use this blanket underneath your knees as a little bit of support there. And I realized if I wanted to do that, my blanket is a little bit short, so if you need to adjust the length of your blanket to support your knees, go ahead and do that. And you just wanna pick a place where you feel a little bit of support there. This should feel nice for your lower back. And then you might decide as you come to lie down to bring one hand onto your belly and the other hand onto your heart. Take a moment to get your shoulder blades to relax. To soften your jaw. Relax the space around your eyes. And just begin to feel the heat that your hand is imparting to your belly, to your heart. There should be a little bit of temperature exchange there. Your hands are really cold. You can always take the palms of your hands and rub them together for a few moments, creating a little bit of friction, a little bit of warmth, and then go ahead and place your hand back on the heart and one on the belly so you can feel that warmth being transferred to those areas of your body. And what heat helps us to do is to begin to melt a little bit, begin to be a little more open, a little more easy. So when you think about practicing unconditional love, to practice that unconditional love, you have to be quite open. You can't be closed off. So you're 
practice that in our bodies. We'll have to really open up our chests and our shoulders. We'll have to elongate our torsos here. That's what the hand on the belly is for, so we can feel that feeling in our physical body, not just as a kind of esoteric thought of the unconditional love that mothers are so good at. Just so we can actually feel that. And if you are a mother being celebrated today, that you can feel that feeling in your body. That you can give a little of your unconditional love that you give to your children, your partner, all the people around you. Give a little bit of that back to yourself. Another few deep breaths here. If you need to rub the hands together again to feel the heat on your chest and on your belly, go right ahead. your next breath in begin to blink your eyes open if they were closed reach your arms up towards the ceiling here draw the soles of your feet in so your knees are pointed up towards the sky and just start by rotating your wrists a little bit if you like and it feels okay you can draw your knees in and extend your legs up to the sky and rotate your ankles as well I'm just flexing and pointing just kind of waking things up. I'm quite partial here to rocking a little bit side to side on my back if that feels okay on your tailbone. You can do that kind of like a bug who can't quite get up. And just move around for another breath here. You can reach your fingertips up. You can flex and point your toes. And then even if you haven't already, hug your knees into where it's your chest. And actually hold with your hands, or you can use a strap over your legs if you need. Hold your knees into your chest so you feel the weight of your legs compressing your belly ever so slightly. And then as you're ready, take your knees over to the right for a twist. As usual, feel free to adjust into any variation of reclined twists that feels good. Legs can be more bent or straight. You can prop underneath the uh, outside knee or between the knees if you like. Take a deep breath in, fill your belly, fill the center of your chest. And then as you breathe out, just relax into this shape. over for a twist on the left, adjusting so this feels really nice to your body. Bring your knees back to the center line. You can rock a little side to side here. Or you can bring your hands behind your knees and rock a little forward and a little backwards. Either way, you're going to rock a few times. And then bring yourself to a seat at the front of your mat. You can just move your blanket out to the side. Or if you want to sit now on your blanket, you can. And it's totally unimportant how you sit. You can sit cross-legged. You can sit on your heels. You can sit with your knees tented. Sit in a way that feels comfortable to your body. I'm just going to turn so that I'm facing you. You don't have to move unless you want to. 
And now, as you find your comfortable seat, bring one hand onto your heart and the other hand on top of that hand. So you're stacking your hands against your heart. I'm just going to do a very brief breath exercise here. And before you start, take a moment to relax your shoulders, to feel your tailbone settle towards the floor. And take a deep breath in through the nose if that's possible for you today. Maybe a big sigh out of the mouth. With your next inhale, you're going to lift your top hand away from your heart and out to your side so the palm faces forward. Exhale here. Inhale, gather that top hand back to the heart and at the same time open the bottom hand out to the side. Exhale here. Inhale, hand comes back to the heart and you switch sides, opening the other hand out to the side. Exhale, relax. Inhale to switch. Exhale to let go. And you're just going to repeat this a few times at your own pace. So go with the speed of your own breath. here of simultaneously drawing in, receiving, but also letting go, giving outwards. It's kind of like giving unconditional love because if you were just given unconditional love, you know, you, you might think, oh, I've given all of my love. There's, there's nothing left. I've given everything. But the more you give, the more love you give, the more there is there replenishable, never-ending well. So the more of that that you put out there, the more there seems to be. This is just kind of a physical gesture to help manifest that. Make you think about it. Gather both hands back in at your heart again. Feel the warmth, the heat that your hands can impart to your heart and vice versa. Breath in, reach your arms, both of them up over your head. Reach a little bit through your right side of fingertips as you lean to the left. And a little through your left fingertips as you reach to the right. Climbing your imaginary rope ladder up towards the sun. Maybe just one more on each side. And then reach straight up as you inhale. As you exhale, bring your hands down to your sides and bring yourself to standing. As you come to standing, we're going to begin our Mandala Namaskar. And we're going to try and keep it so that we're facing always towards our right. So as I stand here, I look over to my right and I see you or I see my camera. So you might want to do the same that when you look to the right of your mat or when you're facing straight ahead, you see me as opposed to on the left because we won't be facing back here towards my wall or my left at all. So when you're ready, set yourself up there at the front of your mat. Spread your toes really nice and wide. Relax your shoulders. One hand onto the heart, one hand onto the belly. Inhale, fill the belly with breath. Fill the heart with breath, the chest with breath. Exhale, let it all go. Inhale, bring your arms up over your head. As you exhale, interlace 
place your fingers, step your right foot behind your left foot or just a little bit back, and then lift up again as you inhale, as you exhale, lean to your left, stretch the right side of your body. Take a deep breath here if you like. You can look up or pull your arms a little back. And then inhale back to the center line, uncross the feet. Exhale, hands down by the side. Inhale, arms come overhead again. Exhale, turn your palms up as you interlace your fingers. Step your left foot back a little bit behind your right foot. Crossing is optional. And lean to your right, stretching the left side of your body. The only important thing about the placement of your feet is that when you lean to the side, you don't fall over. So if you have like a really big cross or you're just stepping your left foot a little behind your right foot, it doesn't really matter. You feel a nice stretch on that left side. Inhale to the center line. As you exhale, step the feet together and bring the hands to the side. Hopefully you already feel a little more open along the sides of the body. Inhale, bring your arms up. As you exhale, press your palms together, fall forward. Inhale, halfway lift. As you exhale, you're gonna plant your hands down underneath your shoulders and we're gonna get started right away. You're going to step your right foot to the back of the mat and bring your right knee to the floor. If you want to use your blanket as a cushion underneath your knees, please do not hesitate. We're going for lizard here, which means that we're working to stretch our inner hips, our hip flexors as well. You can stay right as I am now with your fingertips framing your front foot. If you like to use props or blocks underneath your hands, don't hesitate to grab those. That might feel nice. You might feel a little stretch in the right hip. Maybe you have to take your hips a little further back. For many of us, as we come here, our belly and our thigh are kind of just smooshed together. If that's the case and you don't feel quite comfortable, you can join me in bringing your hands to the inside of your front foot. You can even take your left foot a little further leftwards on the mat to create space to drop the hips down. If you feel again the insides of your hips, you're in the right spot. If you like, you can shrug your shoulders back and lift the center of your chest. There's a little lizard kind of just tasting the sunshine. Maybe you can look up. Feel a little bit of warmth. As you exhale, you're going to lift your hips back. Your right hip is going to be more or less over your right knee. You can start to straighten your left leg a little bit. You can keep your hands inside, or you can walk your hands back if you like to frame your left leg. And your left leg goes as straight as it needs to go to feel a stretch at the back of the thigh. Maybe you turn your left toes up if you like. Now, as you're here, the primary stretch is probably going to be in the back of that straightened leg. But maybe think about your shoulders as well. Maybe your fingertips go a little further forward so you feel as you fold a little bit of a stretch in your shoulders as well. It's not just about the leg. You're lengthening the torso as well. And take another deep breath here. As you inhale again, you're going to come forward. If you scooch your left foot a little forward, you're going to scooch that left foot a little back. Go ahead and plant your right hand to the floor or to a prop and twist to your left. You can place your left hand on your thigh. You can bring your left arm up to the sky. You're welcome to lean forward again into your hips if that feels nice. Shrug your shoulders back and imagine that you're not just turning to look to your left. What you're trying to do is rotate your heart, the center of your chest, towards the sky, up towards the ceiling. So you're going into this whole revolution of twisting and you go up as far to the ceiling, maybe even look to the ceiling. You can even take your left hand kind of out of this linear straight up and down and over a little bit towards the back of your body. See where you start to feel that your whole body is becoming like a helix. It's just twisting open. Inhale here. And then as you exhale, you're going to fold down, put your hands under your shoulders, take your hips back a little bit again. If they came forward and you're going to step your left knee back next to your right knee. Your hips stay above your knees as you begin to crawl your arms forward, going into a nice puppy back bend. And you want to bring your forearms to the floor and then maybe your forehead comes to the floor as well. You can always place your forehead on your blanket or on a block or a book. You can continue to crawl your fingertips forward. Press all 10 of those fingertips into the mat as you feel the stretch through the front of your chest. You can tuck your toes under if you want. Keep your hips more above 
your knees. So you're not going back towards child's pose. The back of your body is basically doing a table and the front of your body is melting towards the floor. To come out of this one. Maybe tuck your toes, you're gonna to untuck them and you're just gonna slide backwards towards child's pose. You can keep your knees close together or you could press your fingertips down and take your knees a little wider before you come to that child's pose. See what feels comfortable to your body. If child's pose doesn't feel quite right here, you can always slide all the way forward and lie face down on your belly for just a couple deep breaths. Just get close to the floor. You might even, if your forehead is touching the floor, just gently rock your head from side to side, giving yourself a little massage. And then as you're ready, you're gonna inhale and come forward to your table. Put your knees right underneath your hips, hands under the shoulders, three cows. Inhale, soften the belly. And three cats, exhale, lift. Two more at your own pace. And then as you complete your third cat, you come back to neutral on an inhale. You can stay here at your table or you can tuck your toes down and come to your downward facing dog. Either way, move around a little bit more, maybe pedaling your feet. If you chose table, you could stay with your cat cow, or you could draw some big circles with your hips. There's not a wrong way to move. You move and you explore what feels good in your body. And I know I say this all the time, but we spend so much time ignoring our bodies and their likes and dislikes, their needs and requirements, and kind of just sublimating what our bodies try to tell us. So it is incredibly powerful to be able to take even just a few minutes in your day to actually be like, oh my gosh, my body likes this. My body was not like that. This feels good in my body. And then as you're ready, coming to your table, your downward facing dog. You're gonna float your left foot to the sky and you'll step your left foot back to the front of the mat. If it doesn't make it between your hands, don't worry because all you're going to do is walk your hands to the inside of your left foot and then walk to the long edge of the mat. Right foot turns to face the long edge, left foot turns to face the long edge and keep walking to the back of the room. Right foot turns to face the back of the mat, left foot turns to face the back of the mat. Bring your left knee to the floor and we'll start that whole cycle over here at the back of the room. So now you're back in your lizard pose. It might feel perfectly fine right here. That might feel like a oh, really nice stretch for the front of your hip. Maybe you need to take your hips back or prop yourself up either way on blocks. You could bring your hands to the inside of your foot. You can take your right foot further to the right or angle the foot a little bit out to the side for more space in the hips. If you're in a spot where it feels good to lift the center of your chest, Already starting a little back bend here in your lizard pose. Reaching out to test the weather, to feel a little sun. Inhale here. And as you exhale, you pull your hips back. You tip your right foot really far out to the side. You want to kind of bring it back in as you straighten it. And you can keep your hands inside as you go towards your half splits, or you can bring them back to frame. I find that I feel like that's a little more stable in the morning. But you start to feel a little bit the back of your right leg. And then think about maybe feeling a little stretch in your spine, maybe reaching the crown of your head a little further forward. Just breathe here, feel here. Imagine that a lot of time as a mom, you get caught up in giving, in doing all of these things for your children and all of the other people around you. And you just go out there and you give, give, give every single day, every hour. You're always putting out there energy, good energy. 
give a little bit of that back to yourself as you inhale, come forward. If you wiggle your right foot forward, you can wiggle a little back so that you can set up for a twist. The left hand stays down and you twist to your right. And again, you're revolving. You're twisting like a corkscrew, taking your heart up towards the sky. Maybe you take an arm up. Allow yourself to feel really good here, to feel that perhaps physical manifestation of love in your body by being loving to your body. Full back to our support. You're going to plant your hands down, take your hips a little back, left knee above, or excuse me, left hip above the left knee, and you step your right knee back next to your left knee. Spread your fingers wide as you set your hands under your shoulders. Inhale, cow pose. Exhale, cat pose. Close your eyes as you do your next few cows and cats and just start to move in any way that feels good. Maybe that involves more side to side motion or it involves drawing some circles, you can get out of that just linear cow-cat shape if you want to. That means that if you like to stay in cow-cat, you can. Or you can do anything else that feels good. And you don't have to close your eyes. It's just helpful sometimes to close your eyes because it frees you from the idea of what this should look like. It allows you to use that extra sensing to feel as opposed to to, as opposed to seeing what's going on. You can feel what's going on a little more. Couple more reps here. Play a little bit. Make your way back to the neutral spine. We're going to go back to our puppy pose. So crawl your arms forward, forearms to the mat, forehead to the floor. You can keep crawling your hands forward. You can tuck your toes under. If this feels really good and you want even more, some people like to turn their chin to the floor so they're looking forward in their puppy pose. You can try that out and see if that feels nice. Or you can just rest your forehead to the floor today. Feels quite nice to me right now. Soften the center of your chest, remember. Your hands should be open. Number one, two. Give that love, but you have to be open to receive it as well. So let your heart open up here. Feel your chest stretching, your rib cage expanding. And then when you're ready, you can either slide forward onto your belly. Or you can slide back to your child's pose. And here, just take one full deep breath wherever you decide to go. Relax as much as you can in that deep breath. Soften jaw, shoulders, ears, eyes, belly. And then with the next inhale, come back to your table. And you might stay there. Or you might tuck your toes and come up to your downward facing dog. Take a few breaths there. Maybe move a little bit. And now float your right foot inhaling to the sky and step your right foot between your hands. Walk your hands to the inside of your right foot. Come all the way to the long edge of the mat and keep going all the way back to the front of the room. Fingertips plant down. Toes are both facing back to the original front of your mat. And all you're going to do is, oh, thank you, ankle crack. Step your right foot next to your left foot and find your forward fall. Inhale, find half. Exhale to release. As you inhale, you're gonna roll yourself one smooth breath up to the sky. Maybe you take your arms out and up if that feels good. As you exhale, press your palms together and bring your hands in front of your heart. I like to then place the palms one on top of the other on the heart so again, I can feel the heat. You can do that or you can keep the palms pressing together, see what feels most natural to you. Take a deep breath in. As you breathe out, let all of the weight relax off of your shoulders. 
Inhale, open your eyes, bring your arms overhead. As you exhale, press the palms together, bring the hands in front of the heart as you sit back into an imaginary chair, Uttkatasana. Inhale, lift the center of your chest a little bit, start to reach your arms out in front of you and now press your right arm on top of your left arm. You could simply pull your arm across the body. You could wind your hands together in more of an eagle back, or fronts of hands touching. Exhale, sit a little deeper here. And then as you inhale, keep your arms all wound up and come all the way to standing. Reach your fingertips a little more up towards the ceiling. And then as you exhale, let your elbows become a little heavy, sinking down. We're just going to repeat that gentle motion of the hands. Inhale, maybe you lift the fingertips a couple of inches up. Exhale, let the elbows sink towards the floor. One more breath like that. Next time you inhale, you're going to unwind your arms, sweep them all the way up over your head. As you exhale, bring your hands in front of your heart, bend your knees, come back to that Utkatasana. We're going to go to the other side. Reach the arms out in front of you as you inhale. As you exhale, the left arm could pull across the body. The arms could wind up. See what feels like a good stretch between your shoulder blades. Sit back a little deeper as you exhale. And then as you inhale, come all the way to standing. Keep reaching those fingertips up. Exhale, let the elbows sink down. And just repeat that breath two more times. It's not really important how much, if at all, you move the elbows up and down. It's just a vehicle, a way to feel the stretch between your shoulder blades, to feel that space at the back of your heart now opening up, kind of forgotten area of your heart. Inhale, open your arms up. Exhale, sit back into your chair pose, hands at the heart. Inhale the same, reach your arms up, maybe even take them up by your ear. And then exhale, this time fold all the way forward. Inhale, find halfway lift. As you exhale, plant your hands under your shoulders. The right foot again will step to the back of the mat. And then what you're going to do here is leave your right hand planted down, push your right heel to the back of the mat and twist now with the knee lifted over to your left. And again, it's like you're revolving. So pull your belly button back, lift your heart up as if you're trying to get it to face up towards the side. Take a deep breath here. And then fold back towards the floor. You're gonna plant both of your hands underneath your shoulders and we're going to go for a three-legged table or a three-legged dog. Your preference, the left foot is going to come all the way up to the sky as you inhale. Downward dog or table pose, see what feels good. So we're gonna even bend your left knee, stack your left hip on top of your right for scorpion in your table or scorpion in your downward facing dog. Feel the openness at the seat of your belly. Press equally down through both of your hands here. So that you're not twisting from your chest, you're twisting from your belly button to your hip, open towards the left. Inhale here. As you exhale, square your hips and step your left foot behind your left hand at the front of the mat. Rotate your back heel to the floor so you're at about a 45 degree angle on that right foot. And on an inhale, peel yourself up. You can use your hands to walk on your legs. Warrior one. Left foot is facing straight forward. Right foot is facing a little bit diagonally forward to the right front corner of the mat. And your hip points are facing towards that front corner or front side of the mat, short side of the mat. Lift up here as you inhale. And then as you exhale, you're going to take your hands behind your back. Hold on to your opposite elbow creases with your fingertips. Roll your shoulders back. Lift the center of your chest a little bit here. And you're just finding this teeny little back bend. You can kind of think about the forearms resting on the lower back to help you lift a little bit up through your belly button and then maybe lean a little bit back through your shoulder blades. See if you can keep your front knee over your front ankle here as you inhale. As you exhale, fold forward, belly to thigh, or torso a little bit to the inside of your front thigh. So you're coming into a bit of a humble warrior bow, forward, let go. If you like to go a little deeper, you can always interlace your fingers and take your arms up to the sky. So you're stretching the heads of the shoulders a little bit more in this position. As you inhale, unpeel yourself. You're going to bring both of your hands to the inside of your front foot and walk again to the long edge 
of the mat. Left toes turn to face it. Right toes start to turn to the back of the room. You're walking all the way around. So both sets of toes are facing towards the back edge of your mat. Set yourself up if you need to adjust the distance between your feet to be a little longer for your twist. Don't hesitate. Place your left hand down and you're going to twist to your right. Right hand to the thigh. Right arm could come to the sky. Again, think about revolving. So it's not just about facing to your left. It's about opening up as much as possible, turning around your spine, spiraling open. Lift your left hip if you want a little more work in that back thigh. Inhale here. As you exhale, fold forward. You're going to plant your hands underneath your shoulders. So you can go back three-legged dog or three-legged table. Your choice. See what feels right to you. Bend your right knee. Stack your right hip on top of your left for scorpion pose. And remember, you're spiraling now just from the belly button to the hip. So the hands are planted equally down. And then you lift your hip up so you feel a really nice stretch at the front of your right hip flexor, torso, maybe even into your quadricep if that's a tight area for you. Quadriceps, a couple of them. Inhale here. As you exhale, square the hips. You step your right foot behind your right hand. We're coming to that warrior one, so spin your back heel to the floor, 45-ish degree angle. And on an inhale, peel yourself up to standing. And as you get there, adjust that 45 degree angle. The back foot is just a median point. Might be perfect for you. You might be a few degrees on either side. Lift your arms up. Inhale. As you exhale, take your hands behind the back. Clasp the elbow creases. You're finding your little back bend. Roll your shoulders back. That might be plenty. Maybe you like to open the chest a little more, finding that deeper stretch at the front of the left hip. All through the belly, through the chest. Feel free to look up or not. You can always look down towards your front knee here. Little back bend. Inhale. And as you exhale, you're going to come forward to humble warrior. Belly to thigh or torso can go a little to the inside of the front thigh. Feel free to take it deeper by taking your arms behind your back, or actually, I guess your arms are behind your back already, by clasping your hands and lifting your arms high up away from your back. Take a few breaths here. Think of this as your surrender. Give in. As you're ready, peel yourself a little bit back up. Bring your hands to the inside of your front foot and walk all the way back to the front of the room. Left foot turns to face it. Right foot turns to face it. You're going to plant your hands down. Soften your right knee and step your right foot up next to your left foot. Inhale, find halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, roll yourself one smooth breath all the way up to the sky. As you exhale, bring your hands in front of your heart. And keep the palms together or you can stack the palms on top of the heart for a deep full breath. We have one more mandala, one more circle to make. Inhale, bring your arms overhead. Press the palms together, exhale to fold. Inhale, halfway lift. As you exhale, plant your hands down, right foot steps back. Here you want to plant your left hand to the outside of your left foot. You could use a prop. Bring your right hand to your hip, look to your right shoulder. Rotate on the ball of your right toes. Set your right foot down so the long edge of the foot lines up with the short edge of the mat. And then take your right arm and create a big rainbow wind. The lean up into the sky. Use that to pull yourself up to warrior two. Left foot faces the short edge of the mat. Right foot faces towards the long edge of the mat. Gaze comes forward. Front knee over front ankle. Inhale here. As you exhale, you're going to take your left hand down the back of your neck and then bring your right hand to your left elbow. And you gently press that left elbow down so you feel a stretch in your triceps in the back of your arm. You might stay right here or you might take your right hand again behind your back. You can just rest the hand onto your sacrum, so kind of right at this level. Or you can reach, I'm just going to turn around so you can see what it looks like. You can reach your right hand up towards your left hand and maybe you hold on not important if you don't. You can just hold on to your shirt or whatever happens to be around. You just want to feel the openness at the center of your chest for a few breaths. You might decide this feels like plenty. 
you need a little more, keeping your hands behind your back, you can lean a little back into a reversed warrior. Maybe you even look up towards your left elbow. As you inhale, come back to the center line, feeling the back, open your arms out to the sides. As you exhale, bring the left arm to the left thigh, bring the right arm over your head, maybe look up towards the ceiling and really reach those right fingertips up so you feel a stretch across the center of your chest so the collarbones are broadening, the whole center of the chest is expanding. If you like, you can slide your left hand further down towards the floor. Inhale here. And then as you exhale, fold forward. Fingertips to the floor, start to walk to the long edge of the mat. Left foot turns to face it. Right foot turns to the back of the room. You walk your hands all the way around so you're facing back towards the back of the room. Same thing here. Right hand to the outside of the right foot. Feel free to use a prop. It's very helpful here. Left hand to the hip. Look to your left elbow. Turn your left foot to the long edge of the mat. And then windmill, rainbow, left arm to the sky. Draw yourself up. Warrior two, adjust. Right foot faces short edge, left foot more or less faces long edge. Arms come out to the sides. Even here, you can feel the expansion as you reach your arms up. It's like you're opening up your rib cage, opening up your heart. Inhale here. Exhale, just relax your shoulders a little bit. And then you're gonna take your right hand down the back of your neck. Your left hand can come onto your right elbow and gently press. And sometimes that feels like you just want to stay here because it's this really nice stretch in the back of your arm, your armpit. Maybe you want to reach your left hand behind your back or reach to connect your fingertips or hold on to your shirt. Go to the point that just feels like you can still take your shoulders back away from your ears. And honestly, that might feel like just plenty. Or you could lean back into that exalted reverse warrior, maybe looking up towards your right elbow. Keep drawing your right elbow towards the back of your body. As you inhale, come all the way up. Unwind your arms. As you exhale, extended side angle, right arm to right thigh. Really reach that left arm up so you feel just so spacious around your heart. You can always go deeper with the right hand if you have that in your practice, you feel ready. A lot of extra stretch for the hips there if you go there. Maybe you even look up towards the ceiling. Inhale. As you exhale, fold all the way down. Walk to the center of the mat. Both feet are facing the long edge. And here we're going to stay for a breath. You can press your fingertips into the floor and stay right like this. Or you can fold a little further forward if the backs of your thighs feel ready. You can even place your hands or forearms on the floor as you look all the way back behind you. Feel free to adjust the angle of your feet a little bit so that this feels really nice for your legs. Just dangle here for a moment. You're welcome to move. You can always bend one knee and the other knee. Again, this is just an opportunity to explore what feels loving and supportive? How can you mother your body, if you will? Take care of it. Treat it with love and kindness, no matter what it throws back at you, no matter what little tantrums it gives you. Sass that it shows you when it's feeling like a teenager. You're still giving it love and kindness. When you're ready, you can walk all the way back to the original front of the mat. So the left foot turns to face the short edge, the right foot turns to face the short edge, plant your hands under your shoulders and step your left foot back, downward facing dog, or knees can come directly to the floor for table. Take a few breaths here. And then inhale, come all the way forward to a plank position. You can have your knees lifted or your knees on the floor. As you exhale, lower yourself all the way down to the mat. Untuck your toes. Slide your elbows back, slide your shoulders back, press the tops of your feet to the mat, and lift the center of your chest. Come to cobra. We're going to spend a full deep breath in that cobra, so don't hesitate to kind of adjust or move around a little bit. Inhale again here. And as you exhale, release. 
We'll repeat cobra twice more. You can do exactly the same variation, or you can take your hands wider out or further back. Again, experiment. My hands like to angle out. See what feels good. Where does you, where does you, where do you feel spacious in your chest? Does it feel nice to look over your shoulder and stretch the sides of the body? We have one more chance to experiment, exhaling to the floor. Maybe you prefer to pick up space this time, elbows under the shoulders, or you could do upward facing dog. Anything where you're lifting your chest, you're expanding your heart open is perfectly appropriate here. Inhale. And as you exhale, release, plant your hands under your shoulders, press back. You can rest for a breath in child's pose, or you can stay on your belly if that's more comfortable for you. And we'll finish our back bendiness with a camel pose. This is the ultimate opening, kind of giving of your energy outwards. You could take a baby camel pose if you like, either sitting on your knees, sitting cross-legged, or with your legs out in front of you, it works in all of those positions. If you wanna take the baby camel pose, this is pretty supportive and generally appropriate for almost every body. Feels usually pretty good. You'll just take your hands behind your hips, however you're sitting, squeeze your shoulder blades together, lift the center of your chest, and that could be perfect, just a nice little baby. If you need a little more, you can always walk your hands further back, Continue to lift the center of your chest. If you feel like you want a little bit of a deeper camel, you're ready. You can always come to stand on your knees. I'm rolling my mat over to create a cushion for my knees. You can also play the blanket under there. Tuck your toes under, bring your hands to your lower back. Squeeze your shoulder blades together again. Lift your chest, let your hips drift a little forward and then take your chest back, kind of like we were doing when we laced the hands behind our backs earlier. The hands can angle in any way that feels good to your body as you come into this pose. You can let your head drop back. Just remember when you come up, you go very slow. If you're experienced in this pose and you want to go deeper, you can always take your hands to your heels. And you just want to feel whatever position you choose that the front of your body is open. That you can really feel the openness of your heart. Inhale, and as you exhale, you can start to release yourself from this pose. If you lowered your hands down, you want them back on your back to support you in even lifting up head pose last. Untuck your toes, sit back, and you can simply sit, or you can come forward onto your belly or onto a child's pose to counter pose this one. Thumb to a place that feels safe. that feels relaxing. And as you're ready, walk your fingertips in towards you. If you're sitting on your heels, you'll take them out to one side so that you are sitting on your bun in the very center of your mat. If you happen to have a prop, a blanket that you can fold up or a block. We're going to take a bridge pose and you could take a supported bridge pose if you happen to have that prop. If you don't, don't worry. You can take a normal bridge pose. If you're using a blanket as your prop for your bridge pose, you just want to fold it up so that it is a couple of inches, three or four inches approximately tall and relatively firm and it just needs to be big enough to support your tailbone. So probably four by five inches is more than enough space. It doesn't have to be huge. If you're using that, just set it next to your side and then roll yourself all the way down to the floor. As you come to the mat, you're going to bring your knees to face the ceiling, soles of the feet on the floor. If you are not using the prop, you're just going to ignore my instruction when I say to put the prop underneath your hips and continue in your unsupported bridge pose. Bring your hands out to your side, press the palms down, press the heels into the mat, lift your hips up into the sky. You can stay right here, or you can take this and make it supported and really gentle by taking the prop underneath your tailbone and letting the hips rest onto the tailbone. 
If you're in this supported variation of bridge, you might stay a little longer. If you're doing the lifted variation, you might hold for a few breaths, release, and then lift again at your own discretion. You can hold the whole time as well if you want and you feel strong and stable, no twinginess in your lower back. If you're taking this relaxed variation, see if you can really soften your whole face, soften the center of your chest in your belly. You're welcome to stay here or take this to a psoas release, extending the legs to the end of the mat if you want. So you're again opening up the whole front of the body. In any of the positions, supported or otherwise, you are welcome to take your arms up over your head to get a little more action in your shoulders and chest. So you can customize and you can see what feels right to you. Even if you're doing a supported variation, you can always add in a little extra lift for a few breaths off of the prop and then lower to the prop. I'm going to play here for another about minute. So see what feels appropriate to your body. Whether you just want to hang in a supported place, just kind of letting go. Or whether you need one last little kind of burst of energy to release anything that's going on inside of you. again to that idea of mother, mothering, the giving of unconditional love. Whether you are a mother, have a mother, know a mother, see if you can tap in to that idea. to give just a small portion of the unconditional love that is given to others. Are you able to give a little bit to yourself? Just remember, it's not that you give a little love to yourself and there's less for everybody else. The more you give, the more there is to give. I feel like this is especially important for moms because they give so much. Remember to give back to themselves because the more you take care of yourself, the more capacity you have to take care, to give love to others. When you're ready, you're going to release yourself from your back bend. If you took your arms overhead or stretched your legs out, you're going to take them back in. So you're back kind of in your proto bridge pose. If you are resting down, you'll lift your hips up first to move your prop out to the side. And then sink your hips towards the floor. You might take your knees a little wider than your hips and just sway them a little bit from side to side a few times. Maybe even stretching your arms out, getting a little bit of twisty action here. At this point, if you are not using a prop for your Shavasana, you could simply stretch your legs out long and come to a pose of rest. Of course, you can always add another pose or shape. If you want to do the supported variation of your Shavasana, you'll roll yourself up one point all the way over to one side to lift yourself up. You are going to grab your blanket or towel or whatever it is that you have. And again, just like we did at the beginning of class, create a nice roll. This and at least the width of the short side of your mat. And then now you're going to take that roll at the top of your mat. And it could be kind of a squashy roll that'll be more gentle, or it could be a really firm roll that'll be a little more intense. Finish with a little supported heart opener. When you have that, you want to lie down onto your roll so that the bottom of your shoulder blades is supported at the base of your roll. So you might have to kind of wiggle and think, okay, is that the bottom of my 
the shoulder blades. All right. And then your arms go over the top of the roll out to the sides and your head can rest all the way to the floor. If the floor feels far away, feel free to fold up something else, maybe a smaller towel or just a little pillow underneath your head. You can also adjust the height of your roll underneath your shoulders to make it bigger or tighter, more firm or loose so that you feel as you lie back here that you are opening again the center of your chest. All of this space here is just expanding outwards. Feel free to do whatever you like with your legs. You could tighten your knees, you could extend them. You could come back a little bit to the beginning of the class. If you did swivel the feet together, you could do that again. And more important than the shape that your body ends up in, is just that the shape that your body ends up in feels loving and kind and generous, all the best qualities those best mothers. Give that to yourself today. usual. If you have the time, I encourage you to stay. Enjoy your Shavasana. And it is time to move on with your day. You can take a deep breath in. A little breath out, beginning to blink your eyes open. You can wiggle your fingers and your toes. Maybe again, you take your knees a little from side to side. Eventually, you can bring yourself all the way over to one side to rest for a few breaths. We're making your way to your most comfortable seat this morning. And the hands could come pressed together in front of the heart or one on top of the other. See what feels best to you. And we'll close with our deep breath together. 
in through nose, out through mouth, on three. One, two, three. Namaste. Thank you so much for sharing your practice and your time with me. Happy Mother's Day to you, my dearest mother, and all of you moms out there. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you.